Hello and welcome back. We're here with part two of the Kalkovan that I started this morning. Um, it's uh, been going for some time now, uh, probably about four and a half hours, and this was a really, really tough rooster I've been cooking here for a while. And so you're gonna see, it's it's just now getting tender. I had just enough time to do this. So uh, uh, before I kind of show you what's in the pot and get another project going, this is Quarantine cat, uh, Kitchen Happy Hour, and so uh, we can't have a happy hour without a little something. And so I wanted to uh, feature a wine today it is a Bourguignon, okay, Domaine de Prayer, and this came from Amy Grabish at uh, uh, The Pip in Dixon, okay? It's a new wine bar in Dixon, and uh, she's still doing wine sales and, and delivering and doing everything she can to get the grape juice out to the customers. So check them out, The Pip Wine Bar. Uh, uh, I've been kind of hashtagging them lately and everything, so you got to check them out, okay? Um, so... Bourguignon, the traditional wine for a coca vin, okay? I did not use a bourguignon, I will admit. I did not use that in my uh, uh, coca vin today because I wanted to have this for drinking at, at happy hour time. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this one going uh, and we'll get right to it. I won't do the uh, fancy wine opening here with a flourish. And as always, I'm gonna get one for myself. Very, very light body to this wine. Gosh, really light color, which you see in Pinot Noir. I'm not much of a wine expert, but I do drink a, a little bit of grape juice, okay? And then uh, one for my wife here. And then we will get cooking. Mrs. Nelson always enjoys a nice little glass of wine in the afternoons. And we got to make sure she's got enough. And we are going to get started presently. Give a little cork in that bottle. Okay, so um, what we're gonna see today is the finish on this Cocovan, and uh, the finish is gonna be a little bit of discussion about like French sauce making technique, because whenever we're doing one of these like, like low, slow braising techniques uh, uh, on a tough cut of meat, we, we tenderize the meat, but then we also get this really, really great sauce along with it. I mean, that's the whole thing with a braised item. You're generating this awesome, awesome sauce. So we are going to have a discussion about um, uh, French sauce making technique here, okay? Just a little bit, bit of an adjustment, okay? Also, for those of you who might be a little uh, uh, squeamish at heart, I'm going to use an old-fashioned technique for thickening here. I got a little of the chicken blood that we harvested during processing. Again, these are nutrients. I, I'd rather not throw them away. I'd rather use every part, and I'm going to use a little bit of that blood for thickening purposes, okay? So we'll talk about that in a little bit. I see Ms. Roxanne O'Brien is out here. I was just getting ready to uh, mention her. Ms. Roxanne donated a little bit of uh, uh, Geechee. Geechee Boy Mills uh, red corn grits today, and we're going to be having that with our Kalkovan, just as a, a little starch on the side. Hey, I could have potatoes with this Kalkovan. I could serve it over buttered noodles, right? But uh, uh, I could also serve it over polenta or grits or something like that. This is going to be the bomb. These are really, a really, really cool pro uh, product, one of a kind, and uh, we're going to be cooking that today. Just something I, I abscounded with here during the, the quarantine years, okay? So, um... Uh, thank you, Ms. Roxanne, for that, and I hope I do justice to it, okay? And I hope I do justice to this Pinot Noir that I am tasting right now, a Bourguignon from France. See what we think. Ah, very light, very easy to drink. Uh, uh, this is going to be another one of those days, guys. I might be sipping this a little too fast and, 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 and lay down some cooking technique for your old school, okay? And so... Um, uh, yeah, delicious. I'm getting a nice little uh, aftertaste to this too. Kind of uh, 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 plummy, like like black plums. And, oh, very good. Um, let's see. Potatoes are traditional, I would say. Yeah, potatoes would be a little more of a traditional thing, but you might see dumplings. This is one of those peasant dishes, you know, like every French grandma knows how to how to cook a chicken in a pot with some red wine, right? And so uh, it's really kind of up to you what you serve with this. In my experience, the coca vin is basically the chicken with the sauce. And the garnish, and the garnish here is like vegetable accompaniment of mushroom, uh, pearl onions, typically, if you got them. I don't know if you're a French peasant, if you got them. Uh, 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 and bacon, okay? So bacon, mushroom, pearl onion, 
stewed chicken until it's very, very tender and a really, really rich, really, really red whiny sauce, okay? So that's that's kind of what we're gonna be looking, looking at. And uh, yes, of course, easy, you know, it's nice to throw potatoes in the pot. I kind of wanted to play with these grits today, okay? This is gonna be a, a French Southern American uh, kind of a fusion here, if you will, okay? Now, um, let's see. Uh, I'm talking about these grits. I need to get these grits going because believe it or not, it's a lot like making making cream of wheat or something like that. And here they are. These are my red grits. You can kind of see them there, red corn grits. And they didn't mill off the red there. So you've got that layer of bran on the outside. You got the germ in there. That's a whole grain there. And it's a, it's it's kind of fresh. You need to keep these guys frozen, in the uh, uh, keep them in the freezer. I tend to not keep them in the refrigerator. They tend to soak up a lot more flavors that way. But you want to kind of keep these um, frozen if you leave them out at room temperature, they're very oily and those naturally oil, uh, natural oils get a little bit rancid and these guys will start tasting funky. They get a little bit of a uh, uh, kind of a chemical-y flavor. If you've ever had rice that's been sitting around a long time, uh, uh, that's what's going on with that. The, the oils in there get rancid, okay? So um, uh, beautiful grit. The thing about this grit is it's going to cook a good long time. So I need to get this puppy going. As always, I'm at the mercy of my ingredients. My stew is basically done. It just needs a little finish work and I need to get some mushrooms and onions and all of that stuff together for uh, uh, for dinner okay and so uh, I'm gonna get these grits going the first thing I need and one of the most important things I ever learned in my early days of cooking was as soon as you uh, walk in the door okay light an oven uh, as soon as you walk in the door of your job at a kitchen, right, light an oven, get the oven going because you're going to need that oven, right? And also get a pot of water going on the fire, right? And that is what I have done. I have got my water on the fire. You always need water in the kitchen. You'll always use it. And so there's a little tip for you right there. I do that a lot of times. Is if I know I need a pot of water, it's like the first thing I get going. So my water's ready. And what we're going to be talking about is the boiling method for grains. And we've talked about this before. I cooked off some gnocchi in one of my classes. And gnocchi might not be a grain, but it's a grain product. And we, we, uh, uh, we cook it in the same manner, okay? I also cooked off a quinoa one day, too. And we use the boiling method for that. So this is review if you've seen all of my work, right? My vast body of work here, okay? Um, now, what I'm going to do is the first thing is I'm going to add a little flavor to this. I don't want a ton of flavor because I want to taste this cocoa vaughn. I've got some definite flavors going on with the cocoa vaughn. And I also don't want to flavor these grits because I want to taste what they really taste like. I'm going to add a bay leaf to it, okay? Real simple, okay? And I'm going to drop a garlic. I'm going to smash a garlic and throw it in there. Big deal, right? But otherwise, I want to leave them plain. I was thinking, oh, should I do like cheddar grits? And it's just like, I can't even taste these red corn grits if I throw a bunch of cheddar in there. You guys get the idea, right? So very, very simple. Just a bay leaf and a smashed garlic, okay? Here I go, smashing garlic. People love to see you smash garlic, they tell me. So here we go. I just give that a little, that guy's just gonna fall right out of his skin. It's almost embarrassing. And let me smash them a little bit more. Let me get some of this stuff off my board, people. I will tell you, I uh, do not like things on my board when I'm working. So there's some garlic, and I'm just throwing that in the pot along with my bay leaf. I'm also going to throw in a little bit of salt with this. Get that water nice and hot. I'm just using a sea salt here that I recently purchased. It's a little coarser than what I'm used to. And what's on deck? is my corn grits, a whisk, and some butter, okay? And the butter, I'm not gonna put in until later. I wanna keep that cold. I'm gonna kind of work it in like I finish sauces, okay? So butter I keep cold. I'm throwing back in the fridge. And then I'm not gonna need that for a good long while. Okay, so talking about boiling method, we salt our water, and um, and oftentimes if I want an absorption going on here, we're going to measure our water, and it's it's usually a ratio thing, okay? Uh, some grain products have different ratios. This particular grain is about a five to one ratio. If I've got like a good quality polenta that's kind of a heavier grain, that's my go-to as well, five to one ratio, right? So kind of a coarser grain, you're looking at about five to one, and you're going to see me adjust this even more, I guarantee. This thing's going to suck up a bunch of water okay I got about a, a, a heavy cup here okay and I'm going in about five cups of water again salt garlic a bay leaf in there and I've got a whisk in one hand whenever we are doing doing the boiling method again 
boiling water, furiously boiling, and I want an implement in my hand so I can be stirring as I'm adding whatever product. If I'm dropping pasta, I wanna be able to stir right now so it doesn't stick together in the bottom, okay? So, got my whisk, I got my uh, uh, grits here, and let me go ahead and get a little closer in. Ooh, I gotta figure all this out, sorry guys. I'm new at all this camera stuff. I have literally done nothing outside of cooking in my entire life, guys. Here we go. So I think we can kind of see the pot right there. Yeah, that's not too bad. Light's not too bad. And the thing that we always say in culinary school, rain in your grain while you stir it. I'm using a whisk right now. I use this for like crema wheat, polenta, just to make sure that it doesn't clump up because nobody wants a lump of polenta. Yeah, right? Pretty nasty. I don't want that. So, I don't think I have any lumps. I'm gonna get rid of my whisk. I showed you that just because it's a step, okay? Back to the pot. There you go. Next thing I need is a wooden spoon, okay? Once you know you don't have any lumps, get in there with your wooden spoon. We're still talking about the boiling method. Now, in the early time, the early moments of this, it looks separated. You'll see those grains like sink down and it's watery on top. I don't know how well you can see that, but you may be able to. The grains going down at the bottom where the flame is and what we don't want, we don't want that grain to start clumping up down there where the flame is. So I don't let a minute go by without stirring this pot, okay? And it still kind of has that separation to it. I can kind of see it, okay? And I wait and I let it cook. That's a pretty good boil. My flame is on about seven or eight out of 10 right now. It's doing very nicely. Now that grain's been settling down, it wants to clump up. I'm gonna give it another little stir, in we go. Now when you're cooking at home, you don't wanna be on the floor like me because if this stuff splashes in your face, it's like getting a sugar burn or something, okay? It'll stick to you and just keep on burning, okay? So uh, uh, be very careful and mindful around this stuff, unlike me. Ugh. It's still got a little separation. Again, what I mean by that is it's all watery on top and all of the grain is kind of down at the bottom, okay? So it's cruising along. After a while, you're gonna see this turn all into one consistency through and through. It's not gonna be watery on top anymore. Once it's there, I'm not so worried about it all settling down, okay? And now I can just put it on a low and slow simmer and let it cook out. I gotta keep stirring it from time to time, but right now I'm worried about lumps, so I'm gonna stir it again. These are hard grains, so I got a good strong boil going there. You don't want such a high boil that you're reducing your water away. I'm sure most of us understand that as water boils, steam is leaving the pot and that's water that we're losing. It throws your liquid ratio up. So I don't wanna boil all my water away, but I want it hot enough to, for that liquid to penetrate those pieces of corn kernel that are in my pot right now. Let's take another look. I think these guys, I'm gonna just go ahead and push them over and just keep on doing what I'm doing. This is a great little job for a kid to hang out and help you out with. I should say that I used water today because I wanted things to taste fairly neutral and I've got plenty of protein in my diet, but you can substitute some milk in here if you wanna up the protein of this meal or whatever, uh, or if you're like, you're, you don't eat meats, but you want some protein and you drink, eat, drink milk and things like that. Uh, you can up the protein for your meals by using milk in here instead of water, or, you know, a little different flavor profile, but man, this Coca Vaughn's gonna be taking over everything. It's just so big and delicious, it's huge. Okay, let's take another look at that grain. You guys can kind of see it there. It's still cruising along, and I'm really not too worried about it sticking so much. Grits are uh, uh, um, not quite as clumpy, I should say, as, say, a polenta. And that's going to keep on cruising on the side. I'm going to move a pot and scoop that over, and we're going to get cooking something else. The next thing I wanted to do really is show you this Coco Vaughn because it's looking awesome. Um, I have to say, let me, let me turn this pot down here just a second, guys. 
Studio maintenance here. Come on. Okay. I think I got it. Sorry. Oh dear. Oh dear. Well, I dropped a garlic clove. I'm sure I'll find that later. I have more. All right, so what I wanted to do is show you this coquevon and a couple of things, a little bit of sauce dynamic here, and then we're gonna cut up some veggies, get them a little color on them and everything to serve with this. It's been cooking all day long with big old chunks of vegetables in there. I'm pulling those out and I'm gonna kick them off to the side, okay? Some people won't even wanna eat those things, okay? So uh, uh, I'm just gonna kind of set them aside and, uh, and then I'm left with just the meat and the sauce in there and we're gonna kind of talk about sauce dynamics. I think I'll pull my chicken out of there in fact, right? So let's kind of do all of that show you what we got here. I see Norman is out there. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Pulling off that lid. And it's going uh, uh, maybe slightly higher than it's been going most of the day. I kind of gave it a little bump, but it has been an aggressive heat all day, okay? This hasn't been just slacking off over here. It's been actively cooking. And I have to say, this is the toughest bird I've ever run into in my life. This guy, I've... I usually when I do this coquevon, I talked about this in the first episode here. Um, I usually sear off the breast and leave it out and then just finish it now. You know, it'll cook in about three, four minutes, basically, if I've seared it off a long time ago along with the legs at the beginning. Um, this particular breast was so tough um, and rubbery that I, I have been stewing the breast and I have never run into a chicken or I'm sorry, a rooster where I have had to do that. This has been such a cool experience in my life. I'm, I'm testing this thing as we go. I'm like, oh my gosh, am I drying this breast out? And it's still all juicy but it's still tough and I'm still trying to braise it out. It's like a leg muscle in, in uh, uh, you know, a, a tough rooster or something like that. So I've never experienced anything quite like that. All of this tough connective tissue that's making this so tough is, is melting down into gelatin in this pot. So when I taste this stuff, my lips are super, super sticky. I don't get this from just anything, okay? This is like a super gelatinous, super rich meal fit for a king, and it's made out of somebody's rooster, you know, that was like uh, uh, taking up space and kicking everybody else's ass in the farmyard, you know? Uh, uh, so uh, uh, it's really quite something to have gone through this whole process. I gotta thank everybody again along the way, my cousin Lily, uh, Ms. Amy Gramish, uh, Amy, Amy Grabish for helping me with the processing at her beautiful, beautiful farm and uh, uh, donating the wine and 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 uh, the bacon for this as well. The bacon we used this morning was from there as well. Uh, this entire experience has just got me glowing inside and I just can't wait for dinner tonight. It's just gonna be so awesome. I gotta give my grits a little stir. And they are starting my grits over here, they're starting to become one with the liquid now, okay? It's not quite there. There's still some separation between grain and the water, the grain phase on the bottom and the water phase up top. But it's definitely soaking up. I had to start this first because these take a long time to cook. Thank you, Roxanne. Good stuff. I'm so stoked. I'm like beaming. Look at me. I'm busting out of my skin over here. Okay, so I want to do some sauce finish work here with this. And uh, so what I'm going to do is kind of pull out some of the chicken and set it aside. And I want to get some of the fat off of the surface of this. I'm going to pull out some of those bigger veggies. So that's what you're going to kind of see right now, okay? It looks deadly and mysterious in there. And there she is. I'm going to pull in the pot that I'm serving it in, and I am just going to place the chicken in there. I'm going to saute up some veggies and uh, kind of bring them all together with that. And then I'm going to add the sauce, and we're going to simmer that for a few minutes, and we'll be done. So, little pieces of chicken coming out. Some of these guys I might need to support if they are falling apart. There's a thigh. Beautiful. I'm going to flip that over. There's a piece of vegetable that I'm just gonna get rid of. I had a uh, cup here I wanted to use. The veggies are coming out. There's a lot of fat in this. Here's my thyme sprig. By the way, all of these parts in here, that can go in my next stock. Here's a piece of carrot piece of carrot or parsnip. And then here's a leg. 
I should probably use a hand now. I wanted to show you this. Let me, let me pull this out with a pair of tongs. Remember I cut my knuckles off earlier. You see how that meat just Frenches down the bone and makes that delicate little drumstick there. I like that look much better than having that, that knob on the end. I'm gonna prop him up. I want him to show off. I gotta stir my grain back here. Sorry guys. I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. It's going a little warm. The tiniest bit of sticking in the bottom, only the tiniest, so I'm gonna work that back into it. It's not scorching or anything. And now, let me show this to you. This grain is all one. There's no water phase to it. It's all one consistency in there. That's what I'm talking about. So now, I want it to kick back, and I want it to say bloop, bloop, bloop. Bloop, bloop. I want it to just sit there bubbling like some hot lava. That's what I'm looking for. If it's not flowing like hot lava, thin it out, okay? Um, I have a saying that I use with my culinary students, cement doesn't cook, okay? If this starts looking like cement, forget about five to one, adjust that stuff. It needs to have liquid. We're trying to drive liquid into those grains. So if it starts getting thick, you heard what I said. Add a little water, okay? Enough said. Okay, it's doing fine over there. I've turned it down so I don't have to kind of really, really watch it while I'm getting this stuff out. Let me pull the rest of this meat out. I can go a little faster with tongs here. I've got a piece of breast with kind of a big gnarly bone on it. This is peasant food. I want to hide those uh, uh, ugly parts and showcase the cool looking stuff. A little smoke and mirrors in there. So that means I'm kind of presenting recognizable parts like wings. I just pulled a wing out. We'll see that off onto the side. And those legs are looking cool. I'll put those together in there. Let me kind of, uh, there. And then there is a uh, piece, of, smaller piece of breast. I've got another thigh. Beautiful, it's cooked down. It's feeling tender and gelatinous. My fingers are super sticky where I just touched it. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Ah, ha, ha. gelatin is our friend, guys. Gelatin is your friend. You want that. That's why we like tough 